Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. Today's date is November the 24th, 2019, and what a great watch list we got for you coming up this week. Miss Vegas? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, Tiffany, Lulu, Tesla, Disney, Roku. And I also want to talk about ATRS because it's caught my attention. So we'll get started, uh, obviously, with uh, Tiffany. And we'll talk about the chart momentarily. But uh, especially those of you that love fashion like me, and I love Louis Vuitton. Um, you know, Louis Vuitton uh, has actually you know, made a second bid to take over Tiffany and company. The original bid was like 14.9 billion and now they raised it to close to 16 billion. They've actually now got access apparently to the books um, and um, that would bring the, the share price to about $130 a share. Uh, does not mean that a deal is going to be reached. Uh, certainly, they're still in negotiations probably or still talking. Um, as you guys know, I mean, Louis Vuitton, um, phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal story. I mean, you know, the ticker on the OTC is LVM. Uh, UY because it used to be just Louis Vuitton and then they took over Moe Hennessy and then they added that um, to reflect that merger back in 1987. I mean Louis Vuitton has so many brands. I mean they own Tag, they own Christian Dior, um, they just have so many different fashion houses. They're in the mm -hmm. wine sector, fashion, leather, perfumes, cosmetics. They even own Sephora. I mean, they're into everything. Um, it's just incredible company. And by the way, by the way, um, the owner of Louis Vuitton, I mean, he actually is the third richest billionaire man in the world. Um, obviously, we have Jeff Bezos, and then we have um, Mr. Microsoft, Bill Gates, and he's right behind them. I mean, he's even richer than Warren Buffett. So he's up there. He's got the cash to do this. Um, this is a family business, and I love that about the company, that it's a family business. He's got actually five children, and uh, you know, four of his five children are working at the company. Um, his daughter is going to be the Harris of the future Louis Vuitton fashion house. And you know what? She's very, very young. She's in her 40s. And uh, you know what? Uh, he's molded his children to be able to take over the business in the future. So I love the fact that this is a family-owned company. Again, very strong, very you know established. And uh, we'll see what happens if they take over and Tiffany does accept an offer. I don't think they're just going to take this one. I mean, it's up a little. It's not such a huge jump from the last offer. Uh, so I don't think they're going to just take it. I think they're going to probably have to negotiate and do another another run at this. So, Jim, let's hear about maybe this Tiffany chart and what we can see because uh, the weekly chart's looking really nice. Yeah, we did have kind of a – this is a yearly chart. I got a yearly and a 20-day right here, and I haven't done nothing to it. So I'm just kind of looking at it. And we see we broke that big resistance right here back – Oh, 109.62, and that was on the yearly chart. Well, it bounced up and had that huge gap on this takeover news or this buyout news. If, if Tiffany's willing to to go ahead and take the offer, but we do have a descending triangle right here on the breakout. As you can see, it did have that high up there at 130, and it did pull back with lower highs, and kind of kept a good support down here at right around the 120. I'm going to suggest maybe right around looking at it 122.33 that's going to be your low 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 support i don't want to see it go below that if they turn down the offer it'll probably drop below that line i mean if, if they finally said nah we're just going to go ahead and keep it in the family or however they're going to work it out but i'm looking at a resistance level that needs to break at 127.37 and then you got a little pivot point area or support right here at 125.69 and another one right down here at 124.46 and another one right here. I'm going to go ahead and drop, drop, let me see, 
Yeah, I like that right there too at 123.78. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger right in here. Looks to me like we got that one. And I'm going to put one right there. 120. Whoop, wrong number. Got to get it right. So we're going to remove, remove that. Right there. 123.38. So let's bring this up to the 20 day chart. Let's see if I missed anything on the 20 day. <clears throat> Pretty tight scramble. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Pretty tight, tight scramble right here. Looks to me like we've had a pretty good little 20 day channel with a pivot point area right here, right at that number right there at that 124.38. So that's going to be your pivot points hard support, 124.38. If it pulls back to that, you might get a retracement bounce back up to the 127.37. We did have a high up here, as you can see back here at the resistance level of. 130.16 and you can see where that candle hit right there so that's a double confirmation of resistance level that 200 day on the 20 days right down here at 121.06 and that's the 200 day EMA and I'm going to put one low support at 119.43 then you have another one here at 116 something on the 20 day chart so let's pull this up to the five day and then we'll kind of get a in fact I'm going to make this a hard resistance, that 127.27, turn that into a red line. Usually I don't take this much time on a chart, but i got to kind of get the idea we're in low support. is going to be right down here at this 122.32 area. should be a pretty strong buy for a little $2 bounce back up. For right now, I think the price has already indicated where it needs to be. Only way this will probably go up higher and break that 130 resistance if there is a deal made and maybe it might even pull back on that but for right now the momentum's still there we have a low support of 122.55 and then that first one's going to be right down here at the 123.31 i'm going to pull up the five day and have one little look at it here tiffany yeah this tells me everything i need to know right now 124.45 is going to be your First support. I'm going to turn that into a red line. And the resistance that we got to break is going to be this area right in here, this 127.37. Then we can bring it up to this higher level of 128. 128 period. 128 period. So low, low support, 122.33. Your first support, this is your second support channel right in here. Your first one's going to be at 124.46, the resistance to break. And I'm going to draw another trend line right here. First resistance at 126.51, and then the hard resistance channel to break will be that 127.37. And that'd be nice to bring it up to that 128 if she picks up momentum. If not, play the pullback on it from this 122.33 area. And actually, I could bring it up just a little bit to 45, and I think I will. We'll put that in there as a little little barrier. So it could pull back and hit that 122.45 where it was back here on last Wednesday. This is Tiffany, and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Lulu. Yeah. So you know what? Lululemon, I got to tell you, ever since like November the 6th, um, this stock is nonstop. This also made a new 52-week closing high. Now, you know, Everyone's loving the Lulu products, you know, um, the quality is just so good. And you know what? The CEO, Calvin McDonald, I mean, he's so young. Um, and do you know that he used to be at Sephora at one time before he came over to Lululemon? And uh, he's a big fitness addict. Um, he, you know, exercises twice a day. He competes in three Ironman races every year. And he also goes on four-hour bike rides. Uh, to clear his head. I mean, he's got a very high pressure job. Um, so you know what? Uh, Lululemon is definitely one I love. It's been, um, you know, on a nice, beautiful channel. 
you know, you can't, you have to remember, you can't have these stocks running forever and never have a pullback. Uh, but Lululemon's on a beautiful trend. So Jim, let's talk about the Lululemon chart because all we keep seeing is higher highs and a new 52 week closing high. What yeah. can you tell us about Lulu? Well, this shirt takes in the money. We called this out when it was up just above a hundred bucks last year. And, and maybe it was back in 2017 when we called it there at the end of the year. But this thing has really bounced up pretty strong ever since. And I like this stock. I like what the company brings in. And I'm very bullish on it myself. So we're, <laughs> we just keep going up on it. We just created a new high on Friday at 220. And that's kind of like an even number. So I'm going to maybe have a pullback support. Well, that's good. See, that, I mean, that's a huge gap up for a couple weeks. So I got another support level here at 207.91. And then I'm gonna draw another one just right down here just for the fun of it down at 203.080. Now this, like I said, this brings in the billions of dollars. So it, it don't have no issue with that and it's top quality uh, apparel. So we're gonna pull up the 20 day now. Oh, Zach, let me pull it, make this the 20 day. I got that into a five got a low support oh I can't do that either so we're going to try to pull this right here at the 215 area find another support area right here at 213 I mean we've really had a good run on this thing this is very bullish it just kind of scares me sometimes when we have like a hundred percent run on a stock in a year like it needs to consolidate or you know kind of pull back a little bit but this last two week run three week run has just been very i mean day after day after day higher highs and then we've consolidated in here and then we had that breakout to a newer high level so we could pull back to support level and that's going to be right here at the 215.54 that's about a four dollar drop anything below that is going to be a strong buy and I'm going to maybe this other ascending triangle pattern right down here is going to be your low support at 207.91. That's about a $12 drop. So that's something you want to probably keep in mind maybe. And that's at 207.91. And I'm going to turn that into a red line. There we go. So that's going to be your low, low support. Your first one that we want to hold is going to be this 218.90. Right now we're at 219.90. So these are all time highs. We got to break the all time high of the 220 to start building up new, new. And I usually add 50 cent increments on these when I'm calling these out. So we have a low support of 207.91 with the third support at 210.15, the first one at 213.16. And that very, I mean, Okay, low support, third, second, and then the first is 215.54. The resistance that we got to break is going to be that 220, and that's going to be Lulu. But what a great chart. What a great run. I mean, I wish I'd have got in this back at 191 and just held on to that for about two and a half, three weeks. But that's Lulu. The next yeah. one's going to be Tesla. I just want to just make one comment, too, about Lulu. I mean, over the past year, the shares are up 67%. And they have a market cap of $17.5 billion. That is just phenomenal. And the other thing, too, they uh, the shares did rise because the company has indicated that it saw very strong sales over the holidays and that um, they, are, they raised their fourth quarter outlook. So that itself um, is reflecting in the stock as well. So, yeah, you've made some really good points about how amazing the stock's been. So what a run. No pun intended, Lulu. Run with your Lulus. Yep. Um, so let's talk about Tesla. And uh, wow, what a story with Tesla. I mean, you know what? We had the uh, little bit of uh, excitement happening with the Cybertruck. And, you know, they did the live display. You know, they had a little bit of a little embarrassing accident when they obviously, um, the windows of the Cybertruck were shattered during the demonstration, you know, they were trying to show the durability of the window. And then unfortunately, 
Uh, that obviously did not work out, but you know what? At the end of the day, you know, Elon Musk did tweet uh, yesterday that 146,000 Cybertruck orders have come in so far. And uh, I'm reading here that they got 150,000 orders uh, based on the article Jim can show you right now. Um, you know, the industrial looking truck is definitely covered in stainless steel alloy. Apparently you can go to zero to hundred kilometers per hour, uh, which is 62 miles per hour um, within three seconds, uh, which is what he mentioned in the presentation in California. Um, some people are a little, you know, concerned about the design of the truck. Um, and some people said it kind of looks like, you know, if you look at the movie Back to the Future, kind of looks like the, the car, the truck that was in there. Um, so, you know what? Um, we'll see. I mean, the share price did take a pullback uh, by 6%, which, by the way, um, this slashed his net worth by $768 million in one day, according to Forbes. Uh, so we shall see what we're going to see on Tesla coming up this week. Uh, Jim, what are your thoughts on Tesla action and uh, the Tesla chart? Because, you know, it did have a little pullback and, I, you know, it could have been as a result of this demo, but um, it did fall below the 20 day moving average. Uh, the stock looks a little bit, you know, overbought, um, but, you know, certainly I'd like to hear what you think about this Tesla chart. Yeah, I definitely called the pullback on it after before the uh, demo came out. I figured it was probably going to pull back, but I didn't think it was going to be a blotch demo like it was. So that kind of encouraged the bears to tackle the, the, the trade and, and play their puts on it and their shorts. But we're getting down to a support level. And I'm still bullish on this company, and I will be for quite a while. And let me see here. Try to draw a couple supports and resistances in it. I'm looking at the yearly chart, so I'm going to pull up the 20-day. Pull this up to a year. There's this place right in here, too. I'm going to count on. Right about, right about there. Yeah, that looks good. Then another resistance right up in here. Another pullback right there. We're going to look at the 20-day now. Okay, it can pull back to this 34. I mean, that's a low, 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 strong buy support. I called this out in the room at 210 or 310. I said this could be a strong buy around this area. So people took that trade and ran it on up. And then mm -hmm. she had nothing but, she, I mean, she was bullish all the way up until she hit that resistance at 360.41. And we did have a high on a year back here at 379. It did have all that drama here at the beginning of the year with the with the Elon tweets and stuff and being sanctioned. And then she went ahead and started bouncing back up. We had that big gap up here off earnings. And then she's done nothing but hit that resistance level again at 360. So this 333 is like a pivot point area. The low support is going to be that right around that 312. And that first support, I'd say right here, right around the 328, 328 area. At 328 is going to be pretty solid. If it pulls back to that, it could bounce up and start to create a, a little channel here. And they do have a lot more stuff coming out, too, Tesla does. And so I'm excited about that here in a couple of years. New diesel truck and then that other, or the big truck and then that, that, that other sports car they got coming out. So, yeah, let's see what happens to this on Monday. It probably will consolidate a little bit. I know there's some bag holders in here. I played the stock wrong Friday. I thought I could get up and bounce it up but she pulled back so i had to cost average down and i took a loss on it it was probably me being stupid not thinking right not having all my my marbles together when i'm sitting here trading and thinking what i'm supposed to be doing but i have been pretty successful with tesla stock the tesla trading all in itself so i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna fight this next week and make what i lost on it back up that's tesla the hard resistance, which is going to be hard, is going to be at 360. Solid support at 3, 
313, 312, 313 area off that 34. If it ever touches that 200, strong buy. You see how it created resistance down here. And finally, we broke out and bounced off that 200 EMA on a yearly daily chart. So your low support, 312.78. Your first one right around that 328.03. And the resistance channel that we need to be into is that 350. And if we can break to 350, it will run back to 360. But for right now, the channel is between 312 and $350 with a pivot point right around where we are right now at the 328, 330 level. Okay, Miss Vegas. Three. Next one we're going to talk about okay. is going to be Disney. Yeah, so I want to talk about Disney because, you know, everyone knows about the movie with Frozen 2. And uh, hopefully those of you that have children uh, took your kids to see Frozen 2 this weekend. Um, you know, they definitely had a record-breaking opening, uh, apparently an estimated $41.8 million on Friday. Uh, the expectations for the film are to deliver $130 million plus over three-day performance, which includes obviously Friday, Saturday, and Sunday numbers. Um, they said that the debut will serve as the largest animated opening ever in the month of November. Uh, they says this would nearly double, <coughs> excuse me, the 70.4 million opening for The Incredibles, which happened back in 2004. Um, so this will be quite interesting to hear what the final, final number is going to be. And what's going to be more interesting is how will this um, stock behave in the market open tomorrow? I mean, we could definitely see that Disney um, is definitely... Uh, overbought. It's got a lot of strength in the stock. It's had a range contraction. It's had inside day. Uh, to me, this is poised for an expansion of the stock. Um, I think we'll see some activity in here tomorrow on a positive note. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll see another run on Disney. I mean, we saw the beautiful run that it had that day that they talked about how they had 10 million subscribers in one day and the stock just had a bit of a frenzy. So it'll be uh, nice to see how this does open tomorrow, and uh, I guess keep this on your radar. And Jim, let's hear about the Disney chart because it's looking pretty good, um, you know, so far. And uh, obviously, it could look a lot better to maybe tomorrow with the market reaction to the Frozen Two movie numbers. Here's another ticker that Vegas and I talked about. We've been trading together for three years on a daily basis, oh, yeah. and we've talked about Disney for three years long and. When this was down at a hundred bucks, we were saying, you know, this thing's way oversold or it's not worth what it's worth in this economy. And with the, the with the war going on between the the Roku and the Disney and the and, and Netflix, it just puts it in kind of a bullish bullish and the selling off of Netflix, I think, give market sentiment to a lot of these other companies. So I'm, I'm thinking Disney is probably going to be one of the top ones because they're so diversified and they have more revenue coming in all around. And I do believe that Disney's still cheap, still cheap at 148.29, where it closed that Friday. I think this thing can run up to 200 to 300 bucks in a year or two. So I'm, you know, I'm bullish on this company more than I am the Roku's and the te and the and the Netflixes and all the other media companies that are out there right now, because I think they're more well-rounded when it comes to 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 that. And so this is Disney. I'm I'm just in love with the momentum and the volume and everything that goes with this trade. We're going to look at the yearly chart right now. You can see we touched off that 200 right here. It's always a great indicator. If you're a beginner, this is called a 200 EMA. I got me a 9 EMA and I got me a 34. And I use these on a daily basis all the way from a minute daily or a daily or a yearly daily to a 20 day four hour to a daily one minute chart. And I use them as supports and resistances. For right now, we're respecting that 9 on that yearly chart and we're creating what you would call a pen or a, what I would call it would be an appending a pen a pennant flag or yeah a pennant flag because you had that big engulfing candle and then you have the flag it's getting ready for another breakout right now as they start as the lower highs come into play and the higher lows come into play it starts to squeeze and you can tell down here where the squeezes took place 
and we've gone up way above after the squeeze, bam, you know, she had that huge breakout and she's held up pretty well ever since with the higher lows. So let's pull up the 20 day. And I also want to in, uh, let our viewers know that a lot of these videos and these people that come out and talk about stocks are talking, they're talking about stocks that they've already played or but they never talk about what they're going to happen into the mm -hmm. future or where you think they're going to pull back or where you think the next resistance is going to be. That's what makes Vegas and I videos more unique than the others is because we're trying to give you a perspective that maybe next week you could take this trade at 140 where this had this little resistance level right here. That's what I would call a hard support. Or you could take this trade at 143.27 off the 200 EMA. Or you could take it off this little pullback right here at 146.05 if it decides to go ahead and knife and pull back to that area because that's a solid support. And you could take this to the resistance breakout of 149.96. So it's, and with the combination of Vegas talking about the companies and, the, and me coming in with the fundamentals and then me coming in with the the text of the charts it's just a perfect combination for for how we make our calls out so low support is going to be right down here i'm going to say at that 146 that's what's got a hold at that 14601 area and it can be up a little bit higher you see where we've kind of touched down a couple times right here in fact i'm going to adjust this and i'm going to make this the red line that 14632 because I like it a little bit better than that other one I just called out there. And then we're just trying to identify a place where it consolidated, it pulled back, and it found support. And we double bottomed right here two times back on Wednesday and Thursday, and it consolidated. And then the news of the movie came out and it gave it a bullish sediment. There's going to be a lot of people in the market watching this ticker tomorrow counting on it for it to go ahead and move on up with this movies coming out so the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 149.96 pullback support is going to be at 146.32 it can drop down to this other support level right down here where it pulled back here at the 144 and that's going to be a very strong buy and it definitely if it pulls back to this top down here i'm i'm all in for calls at the 14081 and this is Disney. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be its competition, Roku. Yeah, and you know what? Roku just kicked off a European expansion. Um, you know, obviously Roku has the customized, you know, they look to make the customizing streaming video experience uh, user-friendly. And, uh, you know, they're firmly established in the U.S. And it's also available, obviously, in seven other countries. But its international expansion is actually just beginning. And that's where their next big opportunity is going to lie. Uh, the first sign that they're tapping into the European market appeared Friday with the release of Roku TVs in the United Kingdom. Um, if you know, back in September, for those of you that follow the stock and that listen to our video, I did mention in one of our videos that Roku had reached an agreement with Hisense which was going to release their first Roku branded TV in the UK. Um, the company announced Friday that the Hisense Roku TV is available beginning this week, which is just in time for holiday shopping. Um, so, you know, if you look at the Roku chart, we see that um, it's definitely had an inside day and some range contraction for sure. So, Jim, let's hear about Roku because I definitely don't want to take my eyes off this one. No, we're, I brought this one up to Miss Vegas this morning because I identified an ascending triangle breakout for Monday. Hopefully, it will break out or it will drop and it will be a, a strong buy situation. But we did have a high on Roku at 176.55. I like the 174.08 for resistance to break. I don't ever count on the wicks. I always count on the bases of the candles. They're the foundation that hold that wick up. That wick can be blown down with a good wind, but the foundation's what matters. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. We're going to look at it. You see what I started to draw here, this ascending triangle breakout. I'm going to go ahead and finish it up real fast. It's going to be right here. 
we're just going to go ahead and bring that on over to that and you'll see that on the 20 this is the 20 day right now we did i called this stock out from the bears when it was down at 100 bucks 103 i said this is a way oversold they were trying to bring it down to 60 they're still trying to do that but they've kind of quiet down a lot now the bears have they because they've been proven wrong so many times and it did bounce up to this 160 372 area and i'm like i said i'm bullish on this stock i'm 80 percent uh, that's pretty strong that's a pretty strong indicator for me it's always got volume it 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 plays in a trend it can pull back and then all the trends will go up and the trend will go back i mean it's just an easy trade easy trade for anybody that wants to stick with one ticker and trade it only but we do have an ascending triangle right here which is call, telling me that we might have a breakout to that resistance level of 163.72. And if we can break that, that next one's going to be at 168.77. Now, we can also pull back. And I got a red line support level right now at 155.83. That's going to be right here. That's where we had these two little spots right in here. Let me magnify this up a little bit. Right down in this where it's consolidated here at the bottom, so that's going to be your solid support level. Or it could bounce on the 20-day 4-hour here at 148.18, and that'd be a strong buy also. So let's pull up the daily. Get one more look at it. Third support. You got your fourth support right down here. Strong buy at 154.56 or 154.15, somewhere in that area. Your third support is going to be the solid right here at 155.83 from the indicators we had a previous couple of days ago. Second support at 157.20. And then that first one at 153.35. You can write these numbers at any time. And then the resistance to break is going to be that 159.59. And it can run up here to the 159.95. And then you've got that wick which will be the resistance that we want to look at at 160.58 for your final resistance for it to pull back. But right now we're in a little channel, and I'm going to pull this 20-day up and show you what I'm talking about real fast. In a little channel right in here, see? Got a little oversold right here, and that was a strong buy, and I probably pointed that out in the room when I mentioned that. And this is a stock that I'll really tell you, this is a stock. I'm going to pull, show you what I like about it on a five-day is you get in here and you look at it first thing in the morning and you give it about 10 minutes to 15 minutes to con figure out what it wants to do. Sometimes it'll pull back and that'll give you the chance to get in it and ride it up. And then at the end of the day, you see how it pulls back again. So this is a trend stock. This is one that runs in trends. You see right here, it bounced up pre-market and then it sold off. That bounce up pre-market was an indicator that I was going to get in on the dip and then bounce back up and hit that resistance again, pulled back the rest of the day. And then you had the big breakout in the morning, you know, you, you take that rung, that big candle, and you run that on up and then you, you decide where you think you're going to consolidate. You start seeing a little curve down, get out of it, take that profit. This stock will give you many chances to get in and out of. You see the double bottom we had right here. You see the triple bottom bounced up and let me tell you that's a on a call on 154.50 all the way up to 159 that's a five dollar bounce in a day that's a three dollar bounce right here so yeah you can make some good money on this stock you just got to be real patient with it follow the trend if the trend's red wait wait for confirmation wait for the turnaround right down here where you had the, the breakout and it pulled back to a lower high you see that or a higher low, that was an indicator that you're going to get a higher high out of it. Same thing right here. You pulled back, you ran up, it pulled back to a higher low, you end up with a higher high. You pulled back, you get up with a higher low, you get a higher high. You, you pull back, it breaks up, it pulls back to a lower high, you're getting ready for another breakout on a higher high. This is an ascending triangle breakout. Should break out and hit that new resistance right around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw another trend line right in here. 
from this previous high. So yeah, I think we're getting ready to break out of this thing on Monday morning and maybe go to 163.72 and start pulling that same stunt that it pulls every day. This is one to really keep eye on and I really love this. I'm 100%, 80% bullish on this trade and it's one that I look at every day. And the last one we're gonna talk about and we're gonna to bring to you from Pennyland is ATRS. Miss yeah. Vegas? <clears throat> so ATRS is Antares Pharma. And I wanna mention this because you know, it's had a new 52-week high, and the reason for that, I mean, the stock's been nonstop since the earnings. I mean, the earnings did come out back November the 5th. This kind of reminds me a little bit about the Lululemon chart, um, how it's been nonstop since that time of the month. Um, but and Terrace, I mean, they had their earnings, and their nine-month year-to-date revenue is $86 million. I mean, um, you know, they did have a lot of sales from their flagship product called the um, Xystead, which is a, a partnered product with Te with Teva's EpiPen. And um, the also the um, CEO, Robert Apple, um, you know, he did talk about the commercial organization and that they're looking to have their launch plan. And they're making a lot of strategy in their top line revenue growth from lots of proprietary and partnered product revenue. I love the fact that they raised the guidance. Um, he said they uh, raised it to a range of 115 million to 120 million. I mean, that is just fantastic. I mean, they have um, also cash and cash equivalents were 41.9 million compared to 40.2 back in June. I mean, the company also did get a two and a half million payment from Faring Pharmaceutical uh, with the sale of the Zomajet needle free delivery system. Um, so that was also added on to the books. And they have, you know, the partner with Teva for a generic equivalent of the EpiPen Junior. So that's interesting. So definitely keep a watch because, you know, when I see these little biotechs that are so cheap and the fact that this company has cash and they've raised guidance, I love it. Um, so this is really good um, of what from what I'm seeing here uh, with this company. Definitely one to watch, Jim. And let me hear what you have to say about this beautiful chart. Well, we've called this out before because I've charted it up before here just recently when this new resistance level of 396. So we broke out of that here in the last two weeks. I can tell on this 20-day chart right here. And that's it. <laughs> you ain't kidding. This is a beautiful chart for a breakout stock. Let's pull up the 20-day. I get kind of tickled when I see stuff like this. Pull up that three-year. I want to get a look at the three-year first. So we're at a three-year high. Okay, you got that? We got a low support right here at 415 on the three-year high. Just kind of looking at it, kind of feeling, getting the grain of it. Seems like it. it's had lower highs here on the three years with kind of a consolidated area right around this, this 380 area, somewhere in here. So we're going to pull up the one year now. Where are we? There we go. Yep. Now, the first... Yeah, that resistance level at 396 is going to be, so that's not even in the subject right now. Let's go to the 20-day. It's had such a great run, I have to go to kind of define it differently. There's a little place right there. You see where it kind of consolidated. That's going to be a solid support. We've got a place right in here. It's going to be a solid support, and we've got another one right here. These are all going to be my low, low, low supports. We got another one right here where we had the gap and it did pull back. So I'm going to put that 480 in there also. So got a low support on this little pattern that we had right here last Tuesday at 449. That's going to be to me your low bottom bot. Well, I can dip down here if it decides to knife and that'll be a real strong buy at 430. But that'll be a strong, strong buy. Your third support, maybe your second strong buy is going to be this 449 if you have patience to wait. But your third support is going to be this 463, 472, and this 480. And the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be this 498. 
And if we can break that, we can go to new new highs. We'll have new buyers come in probably just a little bit after five, and you might get you a nice 50, 50, 75 cent bounce this coming week off this trade. But I'm liking the trend up. It keeps holding support. As you can see, let me draw this trend line in here, and we'll be about done with this one. I'm going to put that right there. That kind of matches up with that 480. So it's held support pretty good on this 10-day 10 10-day 10 uh, time frame. And that 480 was a double indicator that it could hold that first support. And if it doesn't, it'll break on down and maybe pull to these other three supports that I mentioned a little bit earlier. And the resistance, like I said, is 498 and that's ATRS and that sounds like a real good watch list to keep up with next week plus everything else that pops up on our trade idea scanner also I want to mention to everybody that we do have a Twitter link on our website page and if you hit that bird right there it'll take you straight there and you can follow us on that and we post alerts and stuff in here all day long if you're not in the room, and you can also join the room if you like, we have a place right in here where you can hit that chat service. We got a one week trial that you can join and follow along. And if you like the room, you can stick around. If not, you know, you can go ahead and do what you got to do. But this is I Love Stocks and Miss Vegas. You have anything else you'd like to throw in? You're the champ and you're the boss. Yeah, no, I just want to say, you know what? Very important to. Uh, mention, you know, being positive energy. You know, I will say sometimes people post things, you know, themselves about a pick they're trading. Um, I had someone message me this week that they posted something on social media on stock twits and that someone commented uh, negatively towards their trade. And, um, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, at the end of the day, these are just people on social media. There's a lot of mean people out there and they just want to, you know, make you second guess your trade. They're just trying to bash you because they have nothing better to do with their time. You know, um, just at the end of the day, just cut the noise and be the energy that you want to attract. And positivity is the best thing that's ever um your the power of your mind just block the negative people block the negative energy and you know what it's really important to trade with positive people that have the right attitude because attitude is everything and you know what jim yep. on that note i do want to say that we're very thankful very grateful and we're very blessed to have everyone subscribe follow uh to our youtube and that come visit us and we're not happy to meet great people. And, um, you know, always a bottom line, positive energy. We create positive results and a positive outcome. So good luck to everyone's trades this week. And uh, may you have great results. Jim, anything else to add? No, I think that about sums it up. Uh, we do try to keep a pretty tight community with our group. And plus, I just love everybody out there. I'm not one to bash any kind of traders. I'm one to keep that positive energy in there and I just kind of just blow them off and block them or and move on you know we need positive energy and positive movement and this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom and we wish everybody a great coming week and always remember subscribe ring that bell and share this YouTube if you like and we love stocks Thank you.